This is my first tutorial on a software and I chose to do Photoshop because I spend a few hours on it every single night. Um, I just love it and it's practically my girlfriend at the moment. So we're going to start with mapping a texture onto a 3D object, which um, this came out on CS5. Um, it's a brilliant technique. A lot of photographers are using it. Um, there's one specific one who um, does panoramas and then he repeats the panorama and maps it around a 3D sphere and floats it in the panorama he's facing. So it's almost like a mirrored ball um, you're staring at. It looks really cool and I use it mostly in a lot of design things. So make sure you get a texture from either deviantart.com or Media um, Militar. So grab something like that and you can have a grungy texture, smooth texture, whatever you like, it all works. Um, so if we go get our texture, make sure you unlock it first. Go up to 3D and go to new shape from layer. Now you've got cone, cube, cylinder, all this stuff, but we're going to choose sphere. Um, and then it normally takes a little while to load because you're going into 3D because um, it's got to make the 3D object so make sure you don't have a lot loaded up or you know if you've got a fast um, MacBook or iMac whatever you're working on um, then it's fine um, I should be upgrading more RAM very soon um, instead of my 4 gigs I'm gonna have uh, 2 bars of 8 which should really speed up the process um, and so it's normally um, you have these two at the left um, which one changes the camera position and one changes the actual object position so um, if you see up in the top left corner you can see um, one moves the actual sphere um, so what you're actually looking at so it rotates it. Um, this one here, which I've just clicked, actually moves the sphere around. Um, it's a bit slow. Um, so this moves the sphere around. And in your top left corner, you've got um, basically the X and Y axis kind of um, controller, which really moves the object in any way you like. You get it mostly 3D software like Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, well practically any 3D software. Um, so you've got every directional, it's really easy to use, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you want to make the object bigger, um, hit this box here and literally just drag it in and out and that will make the sphere bigger or not. Now, um, I usually do it in a separate window, so you can drag it straight into the project you're working on. Um, make sure you don't rasterize the layer just yet, um, so only because you can change the position of it in your project. Because um, if you rasterize it right now, it's going to fix it, and you might want to change the position or the shadow of it, or something like that. Um, now, just look, it looks pretty cool. Um, and it can work on photos and things like that. Um, I tend to use it a lot more with design, uh, like this. Um, now, I wanted kind of the orbs floating on the water. At the moment, they just look like I've stuck them in. Um, so we've dragged our orb here and that's a tad too big so we're going to move that down um, don't worry about when you click it it goes into a transparent mode don't worry about that um, so it looks a tad too big at the moment so we're going to position it so it's nice um, 
and it looks kind of cool. Uh, let's wait for it to load. Now we're just going to make it smaller. So that's good. And then we're just going to move it a little bit closer. I think there. Um, now you can change the position of it or however you like, um, which is really cool. Now go to your layer and once you're happy with the position of the orb, um, you kind of, you probably want to rasterize it, um, which is just there. So now it's just a normal standard layer. Um, and now you can actually shade it. Now you do get um, some kind of shading when you move it with the 3D but I tend to make a new layer and get out my brush tool um, get some really low opacity going um, make sure you click a brush which has got soft edges um, so I tend when I shade to make the brush fairly big um, only because it's, I don't know, I, f I find it a lot easier. Um, so if we shade it, I want it to give it the impression that it's actually on um, or just above the water and it's producing some kind of um, shadow. So that looks, that looks good to me. Now I obviously need to do all the other orbs. Um, so so they look as if they're floating. Now that looks pretty cool to me. Um, now with the rasterized layer you can uh, you can edit it, you can put all the kind of effects on it but that's basically how you do 3D mapping. So thanks for listening and make sure you subscribe.